you are going to love my buns. They're soft and they're so awesome, you'll want to grab one in the morning and go. Oh, you see them everywhere. And don't tell me you haven't smelled them at the mall, but they won't be as good as mine. Homemade cinnamon buns are the best thing you can make. And I'll show you how they can be healthy and low fat and still be soft and gooey and delicious. First of all, you start with all your ingredients at room temperature. Okay. The recipe is very simple. I'll show you how to do it. I got my mixer here. We're going to start with one and a half cups of all purpose flour. Now I've done this with uh, one cup of all purpose and a half of whole wheat pastry flour. Not as soft, not as good. I prefer to do just all, uh, uh, all purpose flour. So one and a half cups of flour, a quarter cup of sugar, a package of yeast, and I'm using regular active dry yeast, not that instant yeast. It doesn't have to be proofed as long as your temperature is the right temperature, or your liquid is the right temperature. So it's going to be one package of active dry yeast in the bowl, and a um, half teaspoon of salt. That's your dry ingredients. We're just going to mix them up just a little bit until they're mixed. Okay. Now we're going to add a half cup of 1% milk, and it has to be warm, and the the best temperature is about 110 degrees and I recommend using an instant read thermometer because that's going to make the yeast work properly. If it's just about 110 and I think we're, there it goes, yeah, looks perfect. Okay. All right. So a half cup of milk. I always use 1% milk, no more than that. Okay. We'll start stirring that up a little bit and now we're going to add three tablespoons of oil. And I use canola oil, or I also do this with extra light olive oil. So either one works. And then I add one egg. And that's all the ingredients for the dough. Now we're going to mix this on high for three minutes. You beat it at a fairly high speed for three minutes. All right, after about three minutes beating on high like this, we're going to add about a quarter cup of additional flour add it a little kind of slowly and we'll slow it down a bit about a quarter cup or so until it starts to become sort of one solid mass and yeah that's actually pretty good okay so now it's time to knead the dough so I'll get set up for that okay it's time to knead the dough I've got a board out here we're going to work on a lightly floured surface so I'll just flour it a little bit like this now, if you're wondering why I don't use the kneading paddle that comes with my KitchenAid, it doesn't work for me. I don't know. I've tried it, and the dough kind of winds up and clogs up out in here, so I knead by hand. But if this works for you, you're a better man than I am. But I'm going to knead by hand. So, All right. So you kind of get your dough out of the bowl. And if you remember, it was kind of a nice mass like this. And you get it on your floured surface, and you knead it. I need it for about five minutes, which is about 150 turns. It doesn't take too long. Three, three to five minutes, I'd say. So it's one, two. Oh, a scraper really helps too if it starts to stick a little bit. Scraper, a little more flour. Whoops. And back on here. Three, four, five, six, seven, 45, 46, 47. 48, 149, 150. 150 seems to be perfect. Now, see how the dough, uh, it, it starts to absorb less and less flour when it's ready. And also, you can test it by kind of poking at it. If it fills right back up, that means it's ready. Okay? I always spank my dough. Who's your daddy? All right. Now we're going to cover, let it rest for about 10 minutes. You can cover it with a plastic. We can cover it with a towel. I just use the bowl. It's kind of fast and easy. Just cover it with a bowl. Set your timer for 10 minutes. I'll set my new timer for 10 minutes. And it has to rest. Okay, while the dough is resting, there are two things you need to do. One is to grease your pan. I'm using an 8-inch round pan. I greased it with a little butter. I'm not fond of the smell of pan, so I use butter. You can use an 8-inch round, a 9-inch round. You can use a glass pie pan. Almost anything works. 8-inch round pan for me. And now we're going to put together the cinnamon mixture, the brown sugar and cinnamon mixture. I'm using a, a quarter cup of brown sugar. And by the way, in case you don't know, the best way to keep brown sugar soft is to use one of these clay discs like this. I think they sell for about $5. You soak them for 15 minutes in cold water. You put it in the bag. Once it's opened, it'll never get hard. It's perfect. 
So it's going to be a quarter cup of brown sugar, like that, and keep that brown sugar sealed up, and two teaspoons of cinnamon, and that's the filling. You can see I'm not using a lot. One, two. So that's the filling. And it's easier, because it's brown sugar, it's easier to stir this up with a fork. So I kind of use a fork and it uh, makes sure there's no little pieces of brown sugar. Distributes the cinnamon. Oh, if we had smell-o-vision, you'd be smiling right now. Okay, so that's ready. Now we just wait for the dough and we'll start to roll up some cinnamon rolls. This recipe is quick because the 10 minutes of resting this dough actually replaces the one hour of rising the dough you used to have to do. So it's much faster. So now it's time to roll the dough. So we're going to make sure the surface is floured. See this dough is nice, beautiful. So we're going to flour it just a little bit. And now, here we go. All right, so let me move this out of the way. So when the dough kind of fights you back, that's actually a good sign because that means it's like an active dough. Okay, I think that looks about right. There we got about a 12 by 9. Now it's time to put on the filling. The two things are going to go on here. The first is butter. Let me talk about butter. First of all, only two tablespoons of butter. However, I often use one of those trans fat free margarines like a canola harvest, which I really like. Whatever you choose to use, it's two tablespoons and it's got to be room temperature. So there it goes. And you just spread it. Now, you might not know this, but a lot of other cinnamon roll recipes this is going to be like a stick of butter, half a stick of butter. I don't think you'll see too many with this little butter, but really it's all you need. So there it is, two tablespoons of butter, or in my case, canola harvest. And now, you remember the sugar thing we put together, the brown sugar and cinnamon? There it is, you just dump it on there. And with the back of the spatula, it's kind of the, that works the best for me. You can do this by hand if you like, but it's kind of a messy, messy job. You spread it out as evenly as possible. And so make sure everybody gets a lot of this nice filling. And you can see uh, only a quarter cup of brown sugar. It's a lot less sugar than you'll see in a lot of recipes. And by the way, the dough in a lot of these recipes contains melted butter. I use oil, so a lot less saturated fat. So that's about it. Make sure you go to the edges. And now we can start to roll it up. So we're going to roll this from the, from the narrow end is where I start. And don't roll it too tightly because I've learned that when you roll too tightly and you rise them, they kind of rise up in peaks and then those peaks can burn. So I just kind of gently roll it up like this. If you want to, I don't bother, but you can wet this with water and let, let it seal a little tightly, but it's not really a problem for me. So that's it. It's rolled up, right? And now what we're going to do is I always cut off the ends because there's no filling in the very end. So I use a serrated knife and I'll just cut about, I don't know, half or three quarters of an inch off of each end like this. Because nobody wants that. It's just plain old bready dough. And now we're going to cut the cinnamon rolls. Try to get it about as even. I kind of push it and uh, shape it just a little bit like that. This is going to make eight rolls. And you need to mark the rolls because you can't kind of just figure out where to cut it. So it's easy to mark. You're going to mark the, uh, the roll in half first, just about at the middle, like that. Then you mark those sections in half. And then you mark those sections in half. And that'll give you just about eight even rolls. Now, there are two ways you can cut these because they can be kind of uh, soft. And uh, so you can cut them with a serrated knife, like that. But you can see how they kind of move a little bit and they might lose their shape. But whichever way you do it, I'll show you in a second, you put them into, the, into your greased pan, which I'm going to leave sitting over here. So you can do them with this, with a serrated knife, or an easier way, I think, is to use dental floss. Very easy, and you get very, very clean cuts. I'll show you how to do it. So you just get a, a strip of floss like this. You get under the dough. You line it up to your, the mark and you just cross it over like that and you pull. Look at that. Look at that beautiful clean cut. Look at that. I think I'll do the floss. Look at that. 
line it up to, right, it's very easy to do, and you just pull like that. Okay, so you cover it up nice and tight with plastic, and you put this in a warm spot to rise for about an hour and a half, sometimes less, sometimes more, you just keep checking it, and uh, I'll show you what it's going to look like in just a second. All right, I started one earlier, so after about an hour and a half, look at that, this is how, and you don't want them too much higher because they can burn easily, so this is just perfect. This is ready for the oven. The oven's been preheated to 350. You put them in there for about 15 minutes, and they're done. They're ready. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, and here they are. Look at that. Oh my God, can you, if you could smell this, unbelievable. All right, so now they have to rest for about 10 minutes until you can put the frosting on. So while they're resting, we'll make the frosting. So mine is very simple. There's no butter involved. There's no cream cheese. It's just one cup of confectioner sugar and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to put the vanilla in first because uh, liquids change the uh, consistency so quickly. So there's one quarter cup of, uh, teaspoon of vanilla and then we're gonna add up to about two tablespoons of milk, but slowly because this takes a, get, becomes liquid, becomes creamy very fast. So I think I put in like a teaspoon or two. Just add it slowly, because once you put in too much, it's kind of hard to go back. Yeah, this looks pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so the frosting is ready, and they'll be cooled in just a couple more minutes, and I'll be right back and we'll frost them and eat them. Okay, it's time to frost. I waited about 10 minutes, and you can do it however you feel like doing it. You can kind of roll it on like that. You can spread it, whatever works. Okay, that's it. Now that they're done, Try to wait like, you know, because they're still pretty hot. Try to wait like at least two or three minutes before you eat. You'd like to come over and grab one of my buns right now, wouldn't you? How about I do it for you? Oh, God. Look at this. Look at this. Mmm. Oh. This is awesome. Really, really awesome.